The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. Powered by Ram Trucks, America's longest lasting pickups. We have a 37 year old male, impact with a tree, hip injury, possible upper femur. We have a patient that we have to package who's in a tremendous amount of pain. You got the meds? Yeah. My big concern is safety of my team. It's a pretty sketchy place, and the avalanche conditions this year are not good. Okay, slash. Good. It's a tough working condition when someone's in that kind of pain. Ah! Hang on a second. Stop! Stop! Staring down at the community of Jackson Hole, Wyoming, is the vertical world surrounding Teton Pass. Around here, this is everyone's backyard, especially those who live right at the base of the pass. Up high, it's America's largest unofficial ski area. It's a backcountry access point that's grown enough to now seem a bit loved to death. It takes a potent combination of muscle, training, and gear to tackle the Tetons, which rise to more than 13,000 feet. Jackson local Jamie Yount climbed the Grand Teton when he was just 12 years old. That demanding journey sent him on a career path working in the mountains. Today, Jamie's day job also makes him a valuable volunteer on search and rescue. I'm an avalanche technician for the Wyoming Department of Transportation, and this is my 14th winter. So I really relies on me for any sort of avalanche mitigation stuff we might have to do. So if there is a call on Teton Pass, I'm pretty quick to respond. I joined SAR because I wanted to improve my own skills. I wanted to give something back to the community. We live in the Rocky Mountains and, you know, Teton Pass, it's great terrain. Out here, avalanches are the most lethal threat. There's actually four avalanche corridors in and out of Jackson Hole. There's Togety Pass, Hoback Canyon, Snake River Canyon, and Teton Pass, where Jamie works to make sure Highway 22 remains open. For those drawn to the mountains around Teton Pass, it's the only link between the backcountry and civilization. There's mitigation work that needs to happen, making sure that that all goes smoothly. Jack's fire. So for many years in the ongoing battle against deadly slides, the community rolled out its biggest gun. Ready to fire? Fire! By lobbing explosives, you can test the snowpack's stability and preemptively trigger a controlled slide. This neutralizes the threat. And it's work Jamie really loves. Three, five, five. Three, five, five. Rocky goes high. What's not to like? You get to fly around in helicopters and throw bombs out. You can shoot howitzers. On to the detonation spot. Ready to fire! Fire! 
There's a lot of places where you have these really steep road cuts that come right onto the highway. And we've had a lot of problems with these over the years. So the goal of our program is to bring these avalanches down on our terms and then clean it up and get the road back open. So try and you know, keep our transportation system real safe. The local highways Jamie keeps safe provide easy access up Teton Pass. And there is a sect of dedicated regulars at the pass who patrol the backcountry. One of them is Jake Urban a wilderness skills instructor and avalanche expert. It literally is the backyard. We are, we're 15 minutes from our doorstep. That's really what we're all here for. That's what brought us all to Jackson Hole. Jake lives just down the pass at the foot of the Tetons in a log cabin base camp with his wife, Marilyn. Why would I put it in the gas? who is now halfway through her first season on Search and Rescue. As a rookie, I want to finish up my paramedic class, and then I want to go on a couple of missions where I'm in charge and I am calling the shots. From home, the couple runs the Jackson Hole Leadership Institute. And actually, can go find that person, right? When it starts raining, people They teach well together, but will they also serve well together, side by side, as volunteers on the team. We've had a lot of conversations about that dynamic and trying to not make it awkward. It's actually great for our marriage simply because it gives us an opportunity to, to just be teammates outside of the marriage. It's a little bit terrifying um, to go into this because there are people who have 10 years of experience either in the search and rescue piece or even on the medical side. So uh, yeah, when you're new, you're new and you've got a lot to learn and there's a element of the unknown in my future here. It's Sunday night, and um, Marilyn and I are actually getting uh, getting ready to host some guests. Okay. Right. You want to have a drink? Let's do it. We're hosting for a dinner party when uh, when the call out comes. Um. Dispatch is here. This is what we got. Lost gears. They are calling themselves in. They are visiting the area. Details are vague. Search and Rescue doesn't know exactly how the skier was injured. Initial information, a skier is a hip or, uh, or leg injury. First thing I do is I look at Marilyn and I say, are we going on this? I think we have to go for this. No, I'm coming. Okay. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. Okay, this is never convenient. Let's go. These are defining moments for Search and Rescue volunteers when they push the rest of their lives aside and rush into the backcountry. While that can be trying, it can be very rewarding at the same time. We all talk about trying to balance our family, trying to balance the team, and ultimately what it comes down to is if you could plan when rescues would take place, it would be very easy to strike a balance. From Jake and Marilyn's place, it's a quick dash up the pass, so they'll be the first on the scene. Right behind Jake and Marilyn is the rest of the team who swarm upon the hangar. It's almost sundown and the rescue heli doesn't fly at night. So it's on incident commander Jess King to mobilize everyone and make sure they're ready for the steep climb up ahead. So we're assembling a rescue team with rigging gear, ski gear, making sure we're ready for avalanches um, and getting them out of there. So it was really convenient to have Jake in a position where he and Marilyn could drive up to the pass and get eyes on the patient first on scene. Jake and Marilyn interview the patient's friends who saw their companion crash into a tree. Initial signs indicate a pelvic fracture, a potentially lethal injury. So we can just shuffle How are your feet doing, David? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The team's big task is getting the patient out of the backcountry as quickly as possible. That means traversing through the same steep terrain Jamie blasts for avalanches. Avalanche risk goes way up when Teton Pass is hit by approaching storms and now one is on track to collide with the pass. So that puts this attempted rescue on a collision course with a blizzard.
powered by Ram Trucks, America's longest lasting pickups. As night approaches along with a snowstorm, husband and wife team Jake and Marilyn rush to lower a 37-year-old man down the mountain to a waiting ambulance. It's the couple's first rescue working together. We right tried really there. quick put my left ski on and see what he does. Being on scene is, I thrive on it. It's where I think a lot of the problem solving um, begins and, and where it takes place. It's a great position to have the trust of the team to be able to be put in that position. I'm always eager to fill it and serve um, and ultimately try to make the rescue as smooth as possible for the rest of the team. 12 miles away at the hangar, Incident Commander Jess King lays out the situation as a snowstorm continues to pound Teton Pass. Alex and Jen Sparks are getting ready to load up in my vehicle and Mike Moyer's vehicle, okay. heading up, and we've got the advanced medical. We've got a lot of concerns. Once we get on scene, we'll probably be worried about avalanches um, in the exposed terrain. And I can hike the patient has an injury, making them um, unable to walk. We knew we couldn't fly for this one because it's getting dark and also it's just really bad weather out right now. So we know we're going to have to package him and transport him. Yes, he's in it. This is the first rescue where Jake and Marilyn are working as a team. They're the only married couple on search and rescue, and they hope their close relationship makes them good rescue teammates. Tonight, it's so far so good. We were on scene with the patient probably another 20, 25 minutes um, from the time we left the vehicle, half a mile from the road, within visual of the road itself, you know, not very far, um, but technical terrain directly above a cliff band. So if we can just shuffle. How are your feet doing, David? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You know, in terms of, you know, we definitely have a different style and a different way about things, but, you know, arguably, we're ultimately just trying to get to the same place. We palpate the patient's body to figure out where the injury is, what's, what's in trouble, and it was his hip pelvis area, so it was really hard to figure out without an x-ray machine on site. Your hip checked the ground, not so, the tree. The tree. So. So it ended up being the, um, the femoral head smashing into the acetabulum and then a chip of that breaking off. So anytime anybody has a broken pelvis, it's considered a life threat. The biggest thing that we're worried about is internal blood loss um, and the patient going into shock. Taking away his pain was uh, with, with narcotics was um, critical to being able to get him out of there. Uh, we just need to back down about him and make sure that everybody is accounted for. What's the plan? Drugs, move you. Can we wait till the drugs kick in? Oh, yeah. Backcountry Rescue is brought to you by the Ego Power Plus Lawnmower. Ego, power beyond belief and by Polaris, the world leader in off-road. Visit Polaris.com. Ah. Okay, so we'll hold your foot. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to slide. Marilyn, you doing okay? Yeah. <laughs> Teton County search and rescue paramedic Marilyn Davis offers her best cliffside manner to an injured skier. Her husband Jake lays out a plan for extracting the 37-year-old man. The patient has a potentially lethal pelvic fracture. He's in overwhelming pain. So time for a speedy lowering down to the highway. The plan is to slide the patient across the slope, away from a set of treacherous cliffs, then lower him on a sled using a system of anchors and ropes. Our rigging problem is we need to traverse a patient 150 feet, 200 to 200 feet across the slope. Um, to solve that problem, we benched a sidewalk into the terrain, into the snow, across that that descended very gradually. But as darkness descends on Teton Pass, the approaching storm begins to unload its frozen payload. Seeing the potential for avalanche danger, the Wyoming Department of Transportation closes Highway 22 blocking the route back to town. Unsure whether or not the waiting ambulance will make it off the pass, the team continues monitoring Jake and Marilyn's progress with the patient. If you'd like to give us an update, you can go right ahead right now. 
copy that. Marilyn! Can, uh, can you give a patient update? You got a radio handy? They want that sooner than later. I'm coming. Okay. Strong pulse. Uh, his breathing is normal. It was very clear what we needed to do. They need to get him warm, splint his leg, and stabilize his body for transport. Give him some pain meds and go. Marilyn continues with patient care, giving updates, and then I begin working on some of the logistics in regards to um, what the extraction is going to look like for getting this patient out of there. Nightfall cloaks the steep terrain, making it increasingly difficult to navigate the patient off this slope. It might seem like a routine bone break, but this injury can lead to a fatal blood clot or internal bleeding. Okay, ready? On three. One, two, three. Good job, Dave. You're doing awesome. That's great. Ah. I can keep going. Okay. Me too. Okay, right? Okay. Okay, your head's gonna be downhill for a second, Dave. Don't get too freaked out, okay? Go, go, go. All hands on deck over here, please. Once we moved the patient at 150 to 200 feet, uh, we had a receiving platform uh, where we transitioned to a steep lowering. Overseeing the lowering is veteran volunteer Tim Seal Carlin. You're going to use a prussic as a brake? Yep. And somebody's going to mind it? We transitioned the patient into an upright feet first. The challenge is to slide the patient horizontally across the slope, away from steep cliffs below. Next, the patient's fate is tied into a rigging system designed to lower him down toward the highway. OK, okay here we go. One, two, three. OK, let's get tension on main if we can. Ah! And with the storm increasing and avalanches threatening the road back to town, Tim spots a problem with the rigging. That's the problem. They're going to do a, a pretty steep lower with um, two ropes and have to pass a knot. And I looked at it and it's rigged not really the best. Yep, straighten it up. Ah. Hang on a second. Stop! Backcountry Zero. A campaign to reduce fatalities in the backcountry. It's time to heighten our awareness about safety. It's time for Zero. Teton County search and rescue volunteers Jake Urban and his rookie EMT wife Marilyn Davis rushed to transport an accident victim down steep terrain to safety. But veteran rescuer Tim Seal Carlin just spotted a big flaw in the rigging system used to lower the injured skier down a 40 degree slope. My big concern is safety of my team. Everybody has to be safe. There is no excuse. Hey, Slack. Okay. Let's get this out of here rig the rope where there is an anchor on one side of the knot, a, a blade device on one side, and a blade device on the other side of the knot. And seamlessly, we kept that rope moving, and we passed that knot, and we moved right down the slope without even stopping. Bikes on speed. Just advise them there at the end of the rope. Jake, advise them at the end of the rope. Even if the team can safely lower the patient to the waiting ambulance at the highway, avalanches threaten the road back to town. For Jamie, the team's explosives expert, this is how his day job overlaps with his volunteer time. Fire in the hole, glory bowl. This is Jamie's specialty, blasting safe routes out of the mountains. The patient is nearly to the ambulance, but now he must endure the pain of being transferred into the rescue toboggan. Thankfully, the approaching blizzard stalls and the avalanche danger drops, allowing the highway to open. Now there's safe passage for the ambulance down to the hospital in town. I say it all the time, we need a good technical rescue. And if you want to build team, if you want to build leadership, if you want to build 
um, camaraderie amongst the membership, the best way to do that is to have a technical rescue and to have a favorable outcome. If we can get those two things together, uh, it makes our team better every time. It increases our level of confidence, it re-engages people, it makes people want to train harder. Really good job by everybody. It was pretty smooth up there and the drums are pretty easy. It seems like everybody knew how to just kind of fall into place. It's just fun having some good teamwork. Mission accomplished. Not everyone's idea of a perfect Sunday night, but Jake is elated with how it all came together, especially the side-by-side -side teamwork with his wife, Marilyn. Yes, I got to be a principal caregiver. It was great. Definitely room for improvement, but the patient fared well, and we got him out fast. Jake and I worked well together. Um, he wants to see me succeed, uh, so he's super supportive, and he's at times making sure I'm successful.